Hello, hello, and hello. I'm back again. I'm back again. Um, and uh, I know I'm coming on early, uh, but I wanted to encourage you this morning. I want to pray. I want to pray for a prayer of thanksgiving. I want to pray a fair prayer of thanksgiving. <clears throat> and one of the reasons why, for many reasons, God being God, but last night, <clears throat> last night I was in service and one of my uh, friends, uh, uh, preacher friends, um, Apostle Keith K. Curry uh, came into the city. We went to, I went to the uh, service and I, he, he prophesied to me and um, confirmed some things that God ha has been already saying. And it was encouraging, very encouraging. It really, really um, encouraged my heart. And I just wanted to come here to give thanks and one of the things that uh, the apostle said last night was that in the year of 2019, that my son would be walking unassisted. And so that made me so excited and, and grateful. And I just want to come here and give thanks for his grace, his mercy, uh, and his power. And I just want to give thanks, just like, and I thought about the, the 10 lepers men that they want to be healed. And they went to Jesus and said, uh, you know, uh, we want to be healed. He, he told them, gave one instruction, go show yourself to the priest. And as they walked in the obedience of that word, as they were walking, their leprosy was being cleansed. But <clears throat> only one turned back and said, thanks, told Jesus, thanks. And so I want to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. And thank you. And thank you. Uh, for your power. He said many, the, the, the apostle said many other things too, as well. Uh, the most, the, many of the most, the most perfect, perfect thing was that he said that he's going to be walking unassisted. And that is my heart's desire. And, and he told God, told me that. And it's one thing to see it. And even with faith, faith doesn't feel good. And you have to fight the good fight of faith because when you're facing you're fighting with faith. You're seeing things naturally, even though I know God was is healed to heal my son. But the process, the stages, which is the most difficult thing, is almost like the duck, the proverbial duck. People look at the duck, and the duck's on top of the water, but they don't see the legs. How the duck sometimes struggle, and it's been a real struggle. But I'm grateful that God has given uh, us and given me the grace to be able to uh, encourage and strengthen my son. And so now he's at a place where he's he's walking. But I thank God next year unassisted. And I thank God for it. We'll be able to get his life back. But he also said that not only that, he's going to be a testimony. And he will prophesy even greater than me and as my, as my seed. And, you know, Daniel, he's one of my most gifted sons. And he's very special. And so that really touched my heart. And see, the thing about it with Daniel, see... Uh, there's times, there's up times, and there's down times. And in those down times, <clears throat> um, I'm always there watching, encouraging him when he's up there with him. And when he's down, <clears throat> I'm letting him know, I'm watching over him and letting him know you can make it. It's going to be okay. And so this is my message that I want to say to you before I pray, is that at every point I was, I've been watching over him as God has given me the strength. And when he needed me, I will say something, give him a nudge, let him know you're going to make it. And then I let him know who he is in God. I let him know the authority that he walk in in God. I let him know the prophet that he is in God. And so at those terms as dad, you know, I'm there watching over him. And what God teaches me oftentimes as dad, as a dad to my kids, he teaches me his position toward his people, toward you, toward me. And what God the word that God want me to tell you today is that he's watching over you. He is truly watching over you. When you don't think he's watching, he's watching. And when, when you at your lowest, he'll give you a little bump to let you know you're going to make it. See, because see the thing about it, oftentimes the test that you're in, it's not that you've done anything wrong. It's the fact that you've done things right. The fact that you love God and God just want to prove his faith through you. God trusts you. God trusts what he put in you. Matter of fact, God is bragging on you. And he told the devil that you will not curse. Uh, uh, you will not curse him to his face and die.
You will not turn your back on him. And see, God knows that. And so that's why God knows you got the necessary fortitude and you have the necessary strength to make it even at your most bad spot your most vulnerable situation, at your most weakest moment, there's something in you that will awaken at that moment that you want to give up or it feels like you're slipping. God will cause strength to come again. This is why the Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew your strength. It's in your weight that your strength, the reserve of what's in you will awaken and cause strength to become stronger. And see, what you need to know, beloved of God, the more you are tried, the more tests and stuff is thrown at you. The, what is all it's doing is just making you stronger. It's making you tougher. And it's making you more hungrier. It's making you fight even more. It's making you not want to give up even no, no more. It's making you get to a place where you say enough, enough of being sick and tired, enough of being broke and sick, enough of living beneath my privilege, enough of dealing with this sickness, enough with dealing with this confusion, enough. This is the place that God wants. God wants that place where you get to a place where you reach for God and say enough, enough. I want what God want me to have. Just like what the man of God said, everybody, that the stuff that you went through in 2018, the tears that you shed, in 2019, it's going to be your joy. It's going to be your miracle. It's going to be your breakthrough. It hurts you some, but it's going to help you a whole lot more. Your harvest is coming on the other side. Your harvest is coming on tomorrow. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy, I declare unto you, shall come in the morning. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I bless you and I magnify you. I thank you, God, for the word that you spoke through the man of God on last night. And God, I thank you, God, for your mercy. And I thank you for your grace. Wherein you said we could come boldly, God. And God, we're coming boldly. God, asking for help and looking for mercy. That will help us in a time of need, God. And God, for those people who are crying out for help, that are listening to me this morning, <coughs> meet their need right now. Matter of fact, you said you are very present help in a time of trouble. And whatever kind of trouble in time they might be in right now, that situation, it might be tedious. It might be a certain period of time wherein it might be over. The, the time clock might be ticking on. It might be be ready to expire. God created a miracle. God bless them indeed, God. God go into that situation. God make things good. God heal them. God make that situation plain for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Expect your miracle. Expect your breakthrough. Expect what God has said to you. <coughs> God ain't forgot about you. He didn't repent for what he said. If he promised anything to you, the gifts that he gave to you, he didn't repent for giving them to you. The thing that he said to you 20 years ago, he didn't repent from saying so he didn't change his mind. He didn't change his mind. The circumstances might have thought that he changed his mind, but God is still locked in. God said what he said, and he mean what he mean. And so it's time to arise. God bless you. And heaven smile on you. And may all God's best be yours. God bless you.